move to scenic Westwood Park near Vancouver for round five of the Players Limited Formula Atlantic Series. Round two on the Race City Oval in Calgary, it was Mark Dismore with a daring move to get by Joby Marcello for the victory. This celebration was to be the first of many for Dismore's team. Mark Dismore winning both round one and two of this series, and he was truly the king of the hill. But here at Westwood, after five consecutive wins, Dismore's domination is threatened. And it's threatened by this man, Tom Phillips. Tom won an Atlantic race here in 1982 and sits on the pole today. Behind them both, Joby Marcello has come to add his name to the Formula Atlantic winner's list. From Westwood, BC, the Players Limited Formula Atlantic Series. Hello, everyone. I'm Jerry Dobson. Joining me once again is Paul Chater. A couple of very interesting stories developing here. We've got a relatively unknown driver on the pole, and Mark Dinsmore, who's won several races so far, is having trouble this weekend. He's qualified well back, Jerry. And Tom Phillips, who is on the pole, has never had a pole position before. And even more surprising, Frank Aller is a driver we would expect to do well here. It's his home track. He blew up an engine in his car yesterday. He's had to rent a car now to drive in the race. We have no idea how he's going to do. A lot of question marks this afternoon. Here is Frank Allers in his rented Swift, a much faster car than his 1985 Ralt. He is qualified eighth. Frank's main goal today is to clinch the Canadian Championship. I, the main ob ob object today is to just uh, basically finish the race and we can wrap up the Players Atlantic Series. But I'd like to have a good finish too. Starting second fastest would be satisfying for almost anyone, but Mark Dismore is unhappy. He's used to being first, and he's concerned. Well, you know, you're worried anytime you're not the fastest car, and, and like they say, I mean, for every every time you win and you keep that string going, it just means you're one closer to a loss, you know, and I hope this isn't it. And Tom Phillips is our Sunoco Gold fastest qualifier today here at Westwood. The yellow number five Swift will hope to interrupt Mark Dismore's string of victories here. And beside Tom is a man who has had it all his way this season. There is Mark Dismore. Third quickest is Tom Hunter Jr. He is Dismore's teammate, and he's capable of winning here. One of Formula Atlantic's brightest talents, Joby Marcello, will start fourth. 28-year-old Pete Hidalgo, who has shown well this season, will be looking for a podium spot today. And the veteran racer Sandy Dells rounds out the top six. Row four has the yellow number 86 of Frank Allers. He's driving that rented Swift and could do well at Westwood. Row six has Michael Buckingham. In his 1988 season, Michael finished top five in every event. Row eight has Canadian Trevor Siebert, the BC native, is a regular in the players of the GM Motorsport Series. Kelowna, BC's Greg Madruziak will start his walk from the back of the pack. The Players Limited Formula Atlantic Series is brought to you in part by Sonoko Gold and by Yokohama Performance Radio Tire.
in car number 20 is the leader, and Tom Phillips right behind him, looking to pass if he can find the right moment. Now Hunter tries to hold off Joby Marchello with Kate Hidalgo into the hairpin. And there goes Mike Berg in car number nine. He passes Mike Massetta for 10th spot, so good move there for Berg. Our leader, Mark Dismore, and now there, look at that pass here. One step closer to Dismore goes Joby Marcello as he gets by Hunter Jr. Charging into the carousel, a corner that can be taken much faster than you would first think. It's quite bank and it holds the car into the turn. They're allowed to swing wide right out to the edge of the speed curving and keep the speed up. Now in the clubhouse turn, the only real left-hander on this circuit. A little short straight onto Valley Corner, then up Deersley. There's your leader once again, Mark Dismore in car number 20. In hot pursuit is Tom Phillips in the yellow car number five. He's right on him now. Tom Phillips has a look up the inside, but it's not a real serious attempt to pass here. Just showing his nose to Mark Dismore to let him know that he can go by if he wants to. Mark Dismore hanging on. Phillips right behind. He's staying with him, but can he get by him? That's the question. Dismore, very difficult man to pass. But Tom Phillips knows this track very well. In 83, we came here and had a classic uh, qualifying duel with Michael Andretti, as probably most people know about here by now. And um, then we went off and did some other stuff, uh, you know, as far as racing went. Didn't come here for a little while. And then we came back in 1986 and uh, basically did the same thing that's happening this weekend. And then we had a car failure in the race. So, you know, granted, we can do all we can, but it's still racing. You know, you have to have to finish to win. Phillips talks about car failure, and that could be a factor here because this course with these tight corners and high speed sections can be very difficult on cars, and Phillips continuing to press Mark Dismal. It's not only tight and fast, but it's also very bumpy. And with the ground effects car, the drivers are literally having their eyeballs juggled around inside their head. It's very wearing on the driver as well as the machine. And there they go. You can see some of these tight corners here. Dismore continues to lead with Phillips right behind him. It is extremely tight and difficult. All the way through here. He's in the draft as they crest. Deers leap the hill, and there goes Phillips. He's going to try on the inside, under braking. He's inside. Mark Dismore, car 20, and Phillips has got the lead in car number five into the hairpin. A beautiful move by Tom Phillips on that hairpin turn. He gets by Mark Dismore, and he takes the lead now. Now Dismore has to chase Phillips as he looks up the inside through the S's, heading down towards the front straightaway. Tom Phillips, his first professional race was right here at Westwood. 1976, and his last win in 1982, he set a qualifying record, so Phillips does with his track, and he's stretching it out a little bit over Mark Dismore. He has really been taking advantage after he got into the lead. Only three quarters later, and you can see what an advantage he has gained already over Mark Dismore as they go through Valley Turn. And a strange part of this course here, it's called Deer's Leap, and the reason it is called that is because there are a lot of deer in the area, and there's a yellow light that will activate if there's deer in the area, so we have to watch for that. Phillips leading into the hairpin, and although he's stretching it, we can count out number 20, Mark Dismore. He's looking to capture his sixth win in six starts in the Formula Atlantic Series. Joby Marcello, meanwhile, is in third. There's your leader, Tom Phillips. Mark Dismore, car number 20 right behind him. There goes Joby Marcello. And behind him, Tony Hunter Jr. and Kate Hidalgo. There's eighth place, Rick Hill, coming into the hairpin, and he lost it under breaking. He's sideways in the middle of the track. He has lost it. Gibson gets by, Burke gets by, and Mark Singer all by, and Rick is going to continue, Well, He does get back on the track, so he will continue the race, but serious trouble for him. And there is another smash-up. That's the car number 15, Peter Fossetti. He's come to a stop, and now he's seeing another one spinning Lee Shepardson. Lee Shepardson, so a problem for him, too. There must be some oil in that corner for both cars to go off so quickly. Tom Phillips really has his swift working well today, though. Dismore is behind him, but not really too close at this stage. But the real battle is for third place. Joby Marcello in car number eight holds off Tom Hunter in car number 10. So Joby, you know, a native from the Philippines, has had a couple of finishes this year on the podium, and he's driving aggressively right now. And heading into the pits, the leader, Tom Phillips. This is really a surprise. There goes Mark Dismore passing a slower car. He's inherited first place as Phillips is now very slowly coming down to a ball. A problem for Tom Phillips. Look at him. He's waving his hands there. He's got a serious problem on his hands, which really opens the door for Mark Dismore. He's flipped up his visor, and he's waving his crew off, so that has to be a serious problem. The belt's off and getting out of the car. So the day has ended for Tom Phillips. Who knows? I mean, it doesn't look like an engine problem. No smoke or any leakage that we can see, but he's definitely out of the picture. 
Meanwhile, back at the front, there goes Dismore past a red a back marker there in the red car. And in behind that red car is Jovi Marcello in car number eight. He is in second place. Through the hairpin, Dismore leads Marcello, but Hunter and Hidalgo seem to be closing the gap a little. Dismore has let it be known that he has been unable to set up his car well for this weekend. He's not happy with it. And everyone wants to be first to beat Dismore in 1990. Meanwhile, there goes the car of Tom Phillips. There's no doubt about it. You see them pushing it off. Uh, that's the end of the day for him. He's got to be upset with this. Uh, the clutch exploded coming out of the hairpin. So I have to park the car, unfortunately. Well, bad fortune for Tom Phillips, but good fortune for Mark Gismore, who takes over the lead once again because of the uh, misfortunate incident there for Tom Phillips. And just behind him is Joey Marcello. And Marcello is gaining rapidly in the clubhouse corner. We can see he's pulled up right behind, right underneath Mark Gismore's way. And so after 16 laps, Mark Gismore continues to lead. We'll be back right after this. taking third place there as, as uh, Dismore's teammate. That was Tom Hunter Jr. He just seemed to roll to a stop there. There he is again. He's got a serious problem. So Pate Hidalgo rushes into third place. Hunter with his number 10 strip and another victim of the rather harsh track conditions. Back to the lead. There's Mark Dismore. Joby Marcello. There's no room at all between those two cars. As Dismore is leading, but Marcello continues to press. His mirror must be full of Marcello's car. Marcello has finished third and second in our first two rounds, and he seems poised now to take over the lead from Mark Dismore. Well, perhaps Dismore is faltering just a little bit. You know, his crew must be concerned because Hunter is a teammate of Dismore. Hunter obviously had a mechanical problem, so if these cars are set up the same, he could be in trouble. And there's another car with problems. The number 24 called of Greg Mandruziak of Cologne, BC. He'll have to watch the rest of this race from the sidelines. And it's a pretty good race right now. There's Dismore, car number 20. Joby Marcello in behind, looking for the right spot in the track, the right moment in time to get by. Not on this corner, however. Joby tried on the outside. It's an unusual place. Dismore actually moved to the middle of the track to try to stop a pass from Marcello. He knows he's being threatened very seriously. Joby Marcello continues to press. Boy, he's close to him. And there he goes. Can he get by? He's trying. Down yes. the front straight. He's pulled out of the draft. He's into turn one now. Into the carousel. And he's got the advantage. Joby Marcello now has the lead. Great move by Joby Marcello, who takes Mark Dismore on that move there. Now, has Dismore got a problem, or is Marcello just driving better right now? Well, it's a combination of that and the fact that Marcello's car is working well. There's Canadian Frank Ellers, who can wrap up the Canadian Championship here today on his last Atlantic race on his home track. Westwood is slated to become a housing subdivision after this season. After a long and very prestigious role in Canadian racing, Westwood is hosting its final season. It's a nostalgic moment for most of the local drivers, in particular this man, Frank Ellis, who has had so many victories on this track. Yeah, it's pretty sad, actually. It's a beautiful circuit. Um, I think they could probably spend some money on it and then make it wider and make it, you know, competitive for quite a long time, but... I guess housing's taken over, although I don't know how soon they're going to build the houses here. Nestled between the BC Mountains near Vancouver, Westwood celebrates its 31st year of racing in 1990. The first race held here was on July 26, 1959. The track has hosted many great champions of both Canadian and international racing. Yeah, I enjoy this track. and I've been coming here for a lot of years now. Uh, the track is probably the roughest I've ever seen it. I wish uh, it could stay longer. I wish we could do more races here. And it's no wonder Joby loves this track because he is way out in front now, in front of Mark Dismore. Dismore having some sort of problem, perhaps. I don't know, but Joby Marcello is really moving it out. As soon as Joby got into the lead, he started to stretch it. Now Dismore has fallen way off the pace, and Joby's managing to carve his way through all the back markers. 
Well, you know, we've seen uh, Dismore's teammate Hunter drop out, and the kind of Tom Phillips dropped out, the pole sitter. Dismore's car is probably set up much the same way as Hunter's, so who knows what's going on with Dismore. Heading into the hairpin now, it's Jovi Marcello leading Mark Dismore, number 20. And a couple of back markers in behind as we go through the hairpin turn. And oh, we got a problem there for Marcello. He has spun out, and Dismore gets by, obviously. So a serious problem here for Jovi Marcello. What a disappointment that has to be. It's an unusual place to spin so far out of the corner. Now he's going the wrong way. He gets the car off into the sand. He's trying to turn it around. He gets back onto the track. He's been passed. He's now back in four spot. What a problem for Jovi Marcello as he is a disaster for him from first to fourth all of a sudden. Meanwhile, out in front, Mark Dismore once again. Every time we turn around, Dismore's back in front. Well, his car is definitely not the fastest today, but he certainly is a recipient of all the best luck that's running around. He's now back in the lead after Marcello's spin. Mark Dismore is in front, and because of Marcello's spin out, that moves paid the dog up in the second spot. Dogo was third in round two at Calgary, so he's Dismore, but Dismore's way out in front. There's a look at that all. Dalgo, an experienced racer, both on four wheels and two wheels. He was motorcycle racing for a number of years, and he's been in the Players' Formula Atlantic Series lately. And at the moment, he's trying to get around. Uh, that's car number 41, John Wink, a much slower car, obviously, so Hidalgo will wait for the right moment on the track here to get by. And there's a car with another problem. That's car number 55, Rick Hill, is slowing to a stop on the track. This track is really hard on cars. Now we watch the race for third between veteran Sandy Dells and the number 70 Black Swift and Jovi Marcello, who led until just moments ago in the white and blue number eight. Marcello lost three positions, but he still seems to have the quickest car on the circuit. Jovi Marcello trying to get back in this race. Mark Dismore way out in front. Marcello and Dells right now going at it. And Dells, a 43-year-old, he's had a lot of racing experience, so he's probably not intimidated by this narrow track, and there goes Jovi Marcello. Marcello drops to the inside to get by, and yeah, he did get by all right. No problem there for Jovi Marcello, who seems to have it all together here. Whoa, he doesn't have it all together there. He nearly lost it again. Overcooked it in the same place in the track that cost him the lead. Now he's firmly in the third place as they head into the essence. Jovi Marcello back into third. Mark Dismore in front. There's a good look at Jovi Marcello as he cruises along here. He seems to have the car in good condition, in good shape for this track. Other cars are breaking down all over the place. Back to the leader, the white car, number 20, Mark Dismore. He's inherited the lead from Tom Phillips, who dropped out earlier with mechanical problems. Then Jovi Marcello spun at the hairpin the first time. Dismore leads, and should he win, he would continue his unbeaten string this season. Mark Dismore, incredible performance, trying to get by. Number 22, Bob McGregor, a back marker that Dismore will try and get out of his way here momentarily, I would think. Bob McGregor, a veteran racer here, and there's Sandy Dells, number 70, his hand up in the air. He was as high as third today. He seems to have a major mechanical problem. He parks it on the outfield, a tough break, and it's going to be a long walk back. But it's good news for Frank Allers right there in car number 86 because he moves up to fourth, and he's having a, a real fine race here. There's the leader, Mark Dismore. In behind him is, is Pate Hidalgo, and behind Hidalgo is Joby Marcello, and there comes Marcello, and he is really close the gap on second spot. Obviously, Marcello's got the fastest car out here. At least he knows how to get the best out of it because he is really moving up. And he's pushing it right to the edge. And so, after 39 laps, Mark Dismore continues to lead, but Joby Marcello is moving up. He'll be back.
Hidalgo and Marcello realize there's very little time left in this race. They're both driving quite aggressively. Dismore, meanwhile, is ahead, but mechanical difficulties have plagued many drivers, including this most teammate, Bob Hunter Jr. So every position here is crucial. We've had several cars drop out of this race. No serious accidents, just mechanical failure, it seems. This track is so hard on these race cars. We're watching the battle for second and third place. That's Kate Hidalgo in car number six. Number eight, Joey Marcello is gaining on him rapidly up the back straightaway. Kate Hidalgo leading Joey Marcello. You know, we talk about this track being so difficult on cars. What is it? Is it because it's so tight? It's tight, it's narrow, it's very bumpy. And for a ground effects car, which has such good traction and is really glued down to the road, every little ripple feels like a major speed bump. Okay, we are down to just one lap remaining, as you can see now, with Mark Dismore continuing to lead. And he is just a few quarters away from another check for $10,000. number 20. He's heading towards that hairpin turn one final time. He must have his fingers crossed. He's trying to make it six for six in the Fort Hill Atlantic Series, and he's only got a few hundred meters left. Mark Desmore, he can taste it now. This would be six straight for him in this series. There's Joby Marcello, and he looks like he's got a problem. His car has slowed down dramatically. Frank Allers is catching it. Allers, Allers just went by me. You got over a half a lap lead. Just keep trying to make it back here. His car, he well, looks like he's not going to make it anywhere. And he's got to be worried now about Allers. Allers could get by him. He's coming around here very soon. Marcello very slow. And there goes Frank Allers in the turn spot in car number 86. Allers could win the Canadian Court Atlantic. The players limited in for $75,000. Meanwhile, car number 20, there is Mark Dismore taking the checkered flag. He's undefeated. Six wins and six starts. There comes Pete Hidalgo for second place right there. And here comes Scott Gibson. In sixth place, and he shredded his right rear tire. He's about to destroy his rear wing, and he gets across the line just in time. <laughs> what a job by him to finish this race. Frank Allers, though, finishes. Here he comes, a very respectable third place, and clinches his second Canadian title in as many years. And the clutch went up, blew up. There's a dejected Joby Marcello, who has the wind slip away in the hairpin, and then he blew a clutch in the last lap. But full credit on this day goes to Mark Dismore, who finished first in a solid drive. And so there you go, the final standings. Mark Dismore wins it here. Peyton Hidalgo finishes second. Frank Allers finishes third. And the winner of our Yoko Motion Drive of the Race is the winner here today, Greenfield, Indiana's Mark Dismore. He drove very well here to capture his sixth win in six starts. What a job by Mark Dismore, a very happy man. Some kind of curse to pass me today or something, I don't know. We just missed our setup, and I'll take credit for that because I'm the computer, and uh, you know, the car's only as good as I can tell them to make it, and I missed. And we were just chasing our tails all week, and uh, I don't know. Everybody passed me in breaks, so it's, it was amazing. But I'll take it. You know, it's kind of a hollow deal, really. I mean, the other five, I feel like I really won. You know, and this one, I feel like you know, they, you know, everybody gave it to me. But I mean, I'm happy. Well, a win is a win, and the celebration continues here at Westwood for this man, Frank Allers, as he chooses his home track after the 1990 Players Limited Cup and $75,000 as top Canadian this season. The Players Limited Formula Atlantic Series is brought to you in part by Yokohama Performance Radio Tires and by Sonoma Gold.